Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Music and Beyond podcast. Today, I have Quinn from Dark Below. How's it going, man? It's going. How are you? I'm I'm ready, man. I'm I'm good. Uh, I'm excited to talk about you know the the new single or the single and yeah. you know the new album. Yeah. So, uh, with self with self inflicted, can you tell me about the inspiration behind the song and its message? Uh, yeah. Um, the uh, so Campbell wrote the song. Our guitarist and singer Josh Campbell. Um, uh, he wrote the song, and. Uh, it was, um, it was a, it was a, it was, um, it was, it was inspired by, uh, a past relationship. Um, so that, that was kind of the inspiration. Um, and the song kind of talks about, um, how it, it's written from the, it's written from one of the people in the relationship's perspective, but it's kind of talking about how hard it is fighting a losing battle. Oh man, I felt that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's, um, uh, it, yeah, it was, it was, it's, it's, uh, it's a pretty personal, a personal song, but I, I feel like it's really relatable. Um, a lot, of, I think a lot of people can relate to, um, that kind of experience, um, and yeah. Yeah, uh, I love it. I've been listening to it for a while because I think I interviewed you guys, one of you guys, like a few years ago. So when when I was able to get the opportunity again to talk to you guys this year, I was like, oh man, like I really hope a new album comes out because like I've been waiting for a long time. <laughs> yeah, um yeah, we've been waiting to we're really we're, we're really really excited to um uh release this. Yeah, and uh with your album set to release uh in May, um what can we expect from the upcoming album? Uh you can for sure expect um it's kind of obvious, but you can for sure expect the singles to be on the album. So, um tent Hate being human, make believe, and self afflicted will for sure be on it. Um, and then there's six more songs, so mm. it's a 10 song album, and um, it, it's a ro- it's a rock album. Um, but there's 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 also some variety as well. Um, the uh, the 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 songs have different inspirations, and like uh, some of the songs started. They had they they had their birth so to say like in the studio so um, given uh, given that um, there's an element of growth throughout the album like just because it wasn't we didn't sit down and write ten songs and then all at once and then it was a very it was a very um, I don't know how to I want to say fluid experience but I don't know if that's the best way to describe it but for lack of a better term we'll go with that. Yeah, and um, right now that you mentioned the uh, hate being human, um, like that's literally like my one of my favorite songs from you guys. Um, so when I when I first heard it, I was like, man, I I'm gonna like this band. And uh, when you guys release Self Inflicted, I'm like, oh my god, like get out of my head. <laughs> But yeah, I, I love it, and I'm excited for for the new album that will be released May 24th. And you know, I think that's gonna speak to a lot of people, in my opinion. I I, I hope so. Um, I I'm I'm feeling pretty good about it though. Um, I'm yeah, I'm also really excited about releasing it. And uh, with self inflicted, it has a powerful and intense sound. Can you walk us through the creative process when crafting such a dynamic track? Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, for sure. Uh, Self-Inflicted was one of those songs where um, it was, so like I mentioned earlier, like some of the songs started and like kind of sparked and started in the studio. Um, Some others, we had kind of like the structure written, but nothing specific was ironed out yet. Um, And uh, we had a couple songs like that, and Self-Inflicted was one of them. Um, it had a different working title at the time, um, but whenever we were doing the pre-production sessions, kind of figuring out what we were going to take to the studio, Self-Inflicted had a different t- working title, but was one of those songs, and uh, we always felt we we didn't, it didn't sound quite like it does now, but it, defi- it, it definitely grew into that, and um I think the pre-production sessions that we kind of had um, with the writing beforehand and then going into the studio and recording it and having that additional time really, uh, really helped the song uh, grow into the song that it is now. And we're all really happy with it. I love it. I When, when I first heard it, I was, you know, Like, I started dissecting everything, and, like, I'm a huge, like, sound guy, like, when it comes to certain parts of the song and stuff, and I think you guys nailed that, like, pretty good, and I'm a huge lyric guy, so when I heard the song, when I heard the lyrics to the song, I was like, man, um, this, it's definitely a playlist song for me, and um, I'm excited to see what the new album and the topics that you guys bring into into this this new album what and what it's gonna talk about. So like I'm excited for May twenty fourth. Hell yeah, so am I. <laughs> uh how does self self inflicted tie into the overall theme or concept for the upcoming album? Um it's uh a lot of these songs so um this is our debut full length yeah right um uh i think i think the band had had an ep released a few years ago maybe even longer um and there was a couple songs on it but this is our like debut full length and um uh, it, the, some of the songs have been, uh, some of the songs have kind of been like cooking for a while, and we they were we took them out and played those songs at live shows. Um, so, uh, and some of these songs were written again in the studio. Despite though um, those differences in time. Um, the general trend that we all noticed was uh, these songs kind of talk about the different hardships and troubling situations that kind of arose in, in life in, as we navigated making this album. Uh, so um, there, it, so they may not all specifically be um, about uh, troubling relationships, but definitely. Uh, um, uh, definitely like troubleshooting life, so to say. Yeah, that's awesome. Because, you know, like, I love that you guys are kind of like, uh, kind of uh, like exploring like the different topics and stuff. So I'm excited to see what what the songs that we haven't heard um, bring to the table. And, you know, I'm sure it's going to be really, really good lyrically. Yeah, um yeah, I'm there's there's a couple. I mean, as it, it's kind of hard to say it, it's kind of hard to discriminate like as, you know, as one of the musicians, it, it's kind of hard cuz like all these all these songs are kind of like, you know, they're kind of like your brain children and um it's kind of hard to like pick a favorite, so I don't really have like favorites on the album, but there are there are some that I'm genuinely really excited to i mean i'm I'm genuinely excited for all of them but i'm you know what i mean but like i'm there's there's a couple where i'm really excited to 
play them live in particular and see like the audience reaction. Oh hell yeah! yeah. Now you guys are gonna come to Texas because I I, I see that you guys only what's up? Oh, I I was just saying like I we've played in Texas a few times. I love playing in Texas. Oh really? Did you guys yeah. go like to Austin or Dallas? I think we were I think we were in the Austin area last. Oh, time. Austin area, nice. Yeah. Damn, I need a I need to make a trip out there whenever you guys come down. Hell yeah. And uh, Dark Below has been known for its energetic live performances. With the album release approaching, do you do you guys have any live shows or tours planned out? Um, we have we have a few dates planned already. Um, we have May 11th, uh, May 24th for the full album release. Um, June 29th and July 21st and August 3rd. Um, so we have, so we have quite a few dates booked. Um, I believe the plan is to book more. Um, I'm, I'm not really, uh, I'll, I'll be bluntly, I'll, I'll be bluntly honest on the drum. I'm not really sure, <laughs> but I know those, yeah, they just, they just tell me when we're playing and I hit stuff. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, um, but also May for sure. Yeah, and also May twenty fourth is gonna be your album release party, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, where's that taking place? Just in case I, I didn't I didn't see where the where it was gonna be taking place, but you know, for everybody that's listening right now and it's you know, getting close to May twenty fourth, um where where can the where's the show at and you know uh, May 24th is Rose Music Hall in Columbia, Missouri. Um, uh, so that's going to be the May 24th one for our album release. And then we're also going to go back there July 21st. Ooh, nice. Yeah. It's kind of like our, it's kind of like our home venue, hometown. Yeah, so. yeah. That's awesome. I, uh, looks like we're going to have to go, we're going to have to take a trip to Missouri. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, anybody love to see anyone come out. If you guys are listening, go buy some tickets and check them out because they're amazing and they have a new album coming out. Okay. And uh, <laughs> and your band has garnered a strong following for your blend of rock and metal. How do you guys see your sound evolving with this new album? Um, uh, it's, uh, that's, that's actually a really cool question because Campo and I have talked about that a couple of times. Um, whenever we, whenever we started, uh, writing more music, uh, whenever I joined the band, um, we started writing more music as we went along and wrote more and more music, we kind of almost called back to our kind of like our roots and like what got us into music in the first place, you know, whenever we started picking up our instruments. So a lot of the songs that got written later on in the process of making the album kind of have more of a nineties flair to them. So Ooh. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Nineties, nineties was definitely like a, a beautiful time for rock and roll. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we had, but in the in the nineties we had Stone Temple Pilots, Nirvana, Alice in Chains. Pro Jam. Pro Jam Pearl Jam too, Soundgarden. Oh Soundgarden. Um, yeah. It's a lot of great music in the nineties. Um a lot of that music in the nineties uh like influenced Campbell and I for sure and I and Joshy as well. Yeah, and I I could totally see a little bit of inspiration of each of those bands well. When listening to y'all's music. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I... <laughs> anyway, yeah. And what challenges did you guys face while recording the album? And how did you guys overcome them? Uh... Uh, well, uh, the, the obvious one would be distance. Um, we all kind of had, uh, we all kind of had to balance our day jobs. 
while making time to uh, go to the recording studio. Um, our and our our day jobs and kind of like where we live is in Missouri. Um, so traveling to the recording studio in Nashville was um, it wasn't it, it wasn't a particularly daunting challenge, but um, it was it was still it was still something we had to plan for. Um, and there was uh, another one was navigating kind of like because uh, whenever like you can you can do pre-production sessions and have these songs planned out. Um, whenever you go in the studio though, and you're actually like it's you know instruments in hand and recording, and you're laying it all down, you see how everything sounds. Uh, it, like it's kind of it's kind of natural to expect ideas to pop in in that moment. So some of the songs, you know, kind of had a bit of a windier path. So um, I wouldn't call it a challenge per se, but um, that was another thing to navigate to. Yeah. And uh, Dark Below has been together for several years now. How has the band's dynamic changed over time, especially with the creation of the new album? Um, that... Uh, I think that kind of, um, that's kind of like, like as we, there's like an element of relaxation that kind of comes to you, like, like with most other things. Um, uh, so like, I'm, so I'm not the, I'm not the first drummer of the band. Um, but, uh, so whenever I first joined, it was kind of like, learning the songs, getting used to playing with the guys on stage. Um, I, I mean, obviously we rehearsed before the shows, but, um, you know, it's, you, you the, for the first couple of years, it was like, okay, like we're trying to get on everybody's wavelength. We're trying to figure that out. And um, we've, we, as we get more shows, under our belt it's like okay we kind of know where everybody's sitting we're on the same wavelength and it's kind of the same thing you know with playing songs and then like writing new ones you get more you get more in sync with like everybody's musical direction so there's an element of like assuredness and relaxation that comes to it to kind of that kind of makes the process easier as it goes um so the dynamic is very so the so the dynamic's a little more intuitive now um, and, uh, I think another thing is also we're kind of more comfortable, uh, including some of the stuff that inspired us more when, uh, whenever we first started listening to music. So again, that whole, um, hearing more of a nineties a rock or grunge sound like in some of the later songs. Yeah, and I I, I love that because you know like whenever I don't know I I see I see whenever I see a band I always see like the like the brotherhood and I always try to like figure it out and uh, I I don't know like I I maybe I look too deep into like like you know how everybody is and. You know, like, I always ask these questions, even when I'm just at a live show, and I'm like, so what do you listen to, or, you know, what got you into music, or, but, uh, like, honestly, I, I don't know, I, I, I've never been in a band, so that's why. <laughs> I mean, it's a really rewarding experience, you should try it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, dude, I can't play an instrument, and, and I've tried singing at karaoke, and I suck. <laughs> Oh, I that that's why I play drums. I cannot sing to <laughs> save my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! And uh, what message do you hope the listeners take away from Self Inflicted and the upcoming album as a whole? Um, uh, I guess, uh, I guess, I guess the overall the take, I guess the takeaway kind of is um. 
it, it might sound kind of cliche, but uh, you're not you're not alone. Um, because the 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 stuff that everybody's going through that uh that we're that we're all going through right now, um, going through life, and all the people that listen to our music or other bands that sound like us that we draw inspire that we draw inspiration from, or play shows with, um, we're, we're going through too. And if we can provide a voice that kind of lets you know that like, yeah, it, whatever you're going through might suck right now, but, um, you're not going through it alone is, um, that's a message I would want everyone at least to take away. Um, makes it, I know if I heard that, I would, that would make, that would make me feel better. Yeah. And honestly, I love that because um, the way that I see music and the way I listen to, you know, certain bands is they gave me a voice when nobody else was listening yeah. or when I couldn't speak. So, you know, you could just show somebody a song and like, you want to know how I really feel and then just play the song and you'll know everything. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've had moments like that too. And it, it, it makes a world of difference to be able to point to something and say like this, this sound, this, this, this gets it, you know? Yeah. And honestly, like, I think that's why like with the, with like my top five bands, it's kind of like, well, especially with my number one, like, uh, like Adelita's way has been a huge part of my life. So whenever I'm... they release, whenever they release an album, I'm like, holy smokes, like, how does he know what I'm going through this year? Like, that's what I was. Yeah, I I remember, oh, I remember listening to Ali this way for the first time. Um, I was, I was, uh, I forget what age I was in, but it was on the radio. I had a, I had like a, I had a stereo system in my room and um, it, it got radio frequency, so I was able to listen to the radio. And I remember listening to the local rock station in Illinois and and listening to Invincible for the first time. And that was, I was like, that that band's gonna be around for a long time. That's a really fucking good song. Yeah, and honestly, like I was in a very bad spot in my life. Like you know, I was even like contemplating suicide and stuff. And yeah. you know, I I talked to the God above, and I'm just like, hey. Give me a reason to live, and I'll and I won't do what I'm thinking. And I was watching WWE one time, and their their song "Invincible" is the intro, and the first thing I yeah. hear is "Believe me, you've never met another one like me." I'm just like, "Holy smokes, you're right." Yeah, that's that's awesome. Uh, I've I've yeah, I, I definitely definitely can relate to that. So um, uh, I'm glad that happened, and. Uh yeah, it's a kick, yeah, it's a kick ass song. Yeah, and literally like I created music and beyond so I could interview them. And I did and I'm just like, should I keep going? And I'm like, you know what, this is fun. Hell yeah. I'm like, <laughs> well I did it. I, I mean might as well keep it going. Yeah, like I'm gonna dude and that's cause that was like my second interview. <laughs> nice. That oh hell of a second interview. Yeah, I'm like the Bobby Outlaw for freaking podcasting music, music podcast. <laughs> nice. And for those who don't know who Bobby Outlaw is, she interviewed Drake like in her third interview, and I'm like, how the heck? Ah, uh, okay, yeah, thank you. That was helpful for me too. I'm one of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I like to I like to end every every interview with with this song. What the song? What the heck? What is this, what this question? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Oh, uh, you did. Not because we're talking about music right now, so all I'm thinking about is songs right now. Yeah, uh, it, it, as soon as you mentioned it, Invisible start playing in my head, so I'm trying to like, I'm trying to like separate it. Yeah, it's I, I, yeah, yeah. I get it. Um, but if you were stuck in an elevator with any musician, dead or alive, who would it be, and what would you talk about? Uh, um. That's that's really hard. That's that's really hard. Um I would uh, any any one? All right. All right. Um 
I'm I'm probably going to go with Chester Bennington. Um, Yeah, he... So, Meteora by Linkin Park. um, Meteora by Linkin Park was the second album. It's the second CD I've ever bought as a kid. And I remember listening to that front to back several times over as soon as I got it. Because it was it, cause it was the CD that had Numb on it. So I was like, I'm oh, going to yeah. get that one. And um, I just remember pouring over that CD book because it had all the lyrics written down. And um, I'd probably ask him, like, how, do you, how did you – how did you write? How did you write like this? Because I remember, I remember reading the CD booklet, and and like it had, they did something like they did something super cool in a CD booklet where they had little like, uh, they had little blurbs where it kind of like kind of had like a little backstory of the song. It wasn't very long; it was only a couple sentences, but like it really it really made the songs more personable and like more relatable on an individual level, whenever, you know, you're buying the CD and listening to all this. And I remember distinctly reading that easier to run track six on Meteora was, um, it's one of my favorite songs by them because the way they approached it was really cool. They wrote, uh, they had like a writing session where they just wrote lyrics, like during the process of this album and easier to run was free written like lyrics done completely and then the music was like kind of added to it instead of instead of the typical process they did where like you know it was kind of like music lyrics music lyrics back and forth until they kind of like got the final product so that was so probably probably chester bennington just just to just to talk about songwriting like how do you how do you draw, how do you like draw on that inspiration and vocalize it and like put it down on paper the way you did because it's because it affected like I mean I I think it's safe to say it affected a generation. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, like yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that one. That's that's amazing, honestly, because and you know it's it sucks that you know we had we had we lost him in a very young age, but. You know, Chester Bennington, literally. Chester Bennington did what Kurt Cobain did in the 90s for for us, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. um, He was a very, he was a very, very influential music influence. Well, that sounds redundant, but he was a very big influence musically on me growing up, uh, both in terms of how I want, how like the type of music that I want to make, um, how I want to be heard in the music industry as an artist, and then like as as a musician to people that listen to our music, um, and uh, just how I go about writing. He he affected a lot of things that uh, I continue to like exercise as an artist today. Yeah. He, so. he he was he was one of the greatest of all time, or he is yeah. one of the greatest. Yeah, um, yeah, that really. You, you mentioned whenever he, uh, whenever whenever we lost him in 2017. Yeah, that one. You know, you kind of hear. Sorry, um, sorry, I'm not trying to ramble too much. Um, no, you're good, I, bro. This is uh, this is your time. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Uh, I don't know. It's it, that that one. That uh, that that one that one stung a little bit. Uh, just I never met him, but that that one stung. Um. So yeah. <laughs> Did you ever see them live? No, I um. No, I I I, I don't even I don't I don't even I don't even know if they were playing in a town that I was uh that I was growing up and um concerts were kind of hard to go to whenever I was younger um it wasn't it wasn't until 
uh, it wasn't until I joined the band that I really started going to concerts avidly and regularly. Um, yeah. Man. So, uh, yeah, it, it was, um, it was, uh, another story for another time, but yeah, to, suffice to say it was very difficult to go to concerts, uh, up until, up until adulthood. So, um, no, I never got the opportunity to see him live. Um, uh, but yeah, like that's, that's one of the ones where, uh, that's one, of, that's one of the ones that I wanted, had wanted to, well, I mean, if they ever play, if they ever play a live show again, like I'm definitely making the, definitely making the trip to wherever they are. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, right now I've seen like a lot of reports where it might be a new female, sing- oh, a female singer, which would be. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Um, I I saw that. Um, somebody, I can't remember who it was, but like somebody leaked it, and then they said, "Oh, nope, I didn't say that. I don't know what you're talking about." But it had oh, already yeah. been leaked. They it it already been leaked. It's already all over. I think it's. I think it started on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I yeah, I saw that. I was like, oh, somebody messed up. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's it's kind of it's also kind of exciting to like see news like that. Um, because I mean, if they yeah, I would. I mean, I would I would like the chance to, to like see them play again. Yeah, that would be amazing. I've never seen them. I feel like I got into them a little bit late. I mean, I listened to them in high school. And middle school, I think, um, mm-hmm. but like when I was when I was a kid, I was just like, oh, so these, so music is music for for movies, and that's all it is. Yeah, like, I didn't know that there was people actually behind it and actually creating art and mm-hmm. putting it on CDs. Like I thought it was just like, like oh, this is somebody's dad singing right now, or. I don't know. It was a weird. It was a weird. It was weird. <laughs> yeah. No. I. No. I get it. Um. Yeah. Up until. Yeah. It, music was kind of a background thing for me as a as a young child. Music was like, uh, like it was it was kind of like background noise. Um. It wasn't until I was twelve or thirteen. Might have been. Might have been. Might have been eleven or twelve. Now that I think about it, <laughs> it's been a long time. But anyway. Um. Yeah, uh, when it, around that age is when I um, I heard it was Green Day first, and then shortly after that, Linkin Park, and those two bands really started like, oh, music's kind of dope, so I'm gonna I'm gonna dive into that. Yeah, my first show was Thirty Seconds to Mars, and I was just kind of standing there, just That's like in one place for one hour and a, an hour and a half, just. Oh shit! Thirty seconds of Mars is a good pick. That was my first show. That oh, how was that? How was that show? It was amazing. It was amazing. And oh, then, I bet. It, and then the following year, I went to go see Bush, Filter, and Chevelle. I'm like, dude, I'm gonna win. I'm winning. <laughs> Bush, that's a that's a band. That's a good band. I like Bush. I like yeah. Machine Head. Ooh, yeah. Dude, but I'm so excited to I'm so excited to to listen to the album May twenty fourth when it comes out. Um uh, I'm pretty sure we're all ready to listen to it and uh you know, I'm excited to see how how the how the album release party goes and I really hope you guys can make it out to Texas sometime unless I make it magically to to where you guys are at. Um, oh yeah. And yeah. Where, where where can we find you guys? Oh, um we have uh you you can find us on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. Okay. And I'll definitely make sure to put the links down in the description so everybody could follow them and oh, yeah. you know check them out they're an amazing band uh been listening to them for years and nothing but great music like it's amazing oh yeah Th- well thank you <laughs> uh, but i want to thank you so much for for taking your taking the time to to talk to me for a bit so we can talk the album and the single 
And, you know, I'm excited to see you guys soon. And remember, everybody, that without music, life would be a mistake. <laughs>